Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have a slight variant of the problem we did in the previous video. Again, we have two strings. To those strings, we have two objects with mass m attached to them, and they each also have a charge on them, but in this case, they do not have an equal amount of charge. The one on the left has charge q, and the one on the right has charge 2q. Also, the two strings are not attached to the same point on the ceiling. They're attached at distance d apart from one another. The question is, based upon the angles, theta, the length of the string L, which I forgot to write down on both sides, the mass M, and of course that shows that they are pushed to the side at distance x, can we determine the value of Q? Now what's interesting about this problem is that the first inclination is when you see it, is that because this mass has twice as much charge on it, you would think that it feels a greater amount of force. But that's not the case, because Newton's third law says that for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction, which means whatever force this mass feels, this mass should feel the exact same amount of force. It shouldn't matter how the charge is distributed. So if we're going to find the force, well, let's first draw the forces here. So this one will get pushed to the right with a force F sub C, which is the Coulomb force, and it'll get pulled down because of the force of gravity. Likewise, over here, this one will get pulled down with the force of gravity Mg. They should be equal to one another because they have the same mass. And this one will feel a force pulling it to the right, F sub C. And those two forces should be equal to each other, again, because... Newton's third law, for every action, there must be an equal and opposite reaction. The force of repulsion is equal on both masses, and since they have the same mass, they will have the same amount of deflection, so that these two angles are equal as well. Okay, knowing that, let's now find the, the Coulomb force. The Coulomb force, F sub C, is going to be equal to K, times the two charges q1 times q2 divided by the distance between them. So in this case, that's going to be k times q1 is q, q2 is 2q, and the distance between them, well, that's going to be d plus 2 times x, and we have to square that distance, quantity squared. So simplifying that, this is equal to 2kq squared divided by d plus 2x quantity squared. All right, now again we're able to realize that this will be in a static situation, this will not be moving, which means that we have a force or a tension on the string pulling in this direction, we have the Coulomb force pushing in this direction, and we have the weight pulling in this direction, which means we can now relate those three to one another as follows. We have this force right here, we have this force down this way, and one going this way. So here we have the tension, here we have mg, and there we have f sub c. So this is the tension in the string, this is mg, this is f sub c, and this then therefore must be the angle theta, the same angle that we see over there. Which means that using the tangent we can relate those to one another. We can say that the tangent of theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side over the adjacent side, which in this case is equal to F sub C divided by mg. Or, we can say that the tangent of theta is equal to F sub C, which is 2kq squared divided by the quantity d plus 2x squared times mg, because mg is in the denominator, so we can write that there. And since we're looking for q, we can then solve this equation for q, and we can say that Q squared is equal to, uh, let's see here, Q squared is equal to, hmm, we'll write as the tangent of theta multiplied times the quantity d plus 2x squared times mg all divided by 2k. All right, but we may not be too happy with the concept of d plus 2x because what is x equal to? Well, we can find out what x is equal to. Let's take that triangle and draw it over here. We have the angle theta, we have the length for the string, and we have x. And so here we can say that x is equal to the hypotenuse L times the sine of theta. So we could replace 
2x by 2l times the sine of theta. We could do that. And let's see, what else do we have? D, the distance D, that's, that's the same. And uh, let's see here. Hmm, I think, yeah. Let's take the square root of both sides. So we can then say that Q is equal to, on the left side, we have D plus 2X. That would be D plus 2 times X, and X is L sine theta, so that becomes 2L sine theta. Theta, and of course, since we took the square root of both sides, the square disappears, then square disappears here, but then we still have the square root of mg times the tangent of theta all divided by 2k. And this probably is the ultimate form, and uh, let's not take that into account. All right, like this. And so this would be then the final form of the answer for q, the charge, given the distance d, the length l, the angle theta, and the mass m. And that's how it's done.